what a mysterious thing madness is. I have watched patients whose lips are forever sealed in a perpetual silence. They live, breathe, eat. The human form is there, but that something, which the body can live without, but which cannot exist without the body, was missing. Nellie Bly paved the way for women in journalism, and for her first and most famous assignment, Bly pretended to be mentally ill to report on the conditions at the Blackwell Island Insane Asylum. She lived at the institution for 10 days, where she witnessed physical cruelty, cold baths, and forced meals of old food. Her report of the cruelty prompted political and public action, which led to the reform of the institution. In her book, 10 Days in a Madhouse, she writes about this traumatizing experience. you to be an investigative journalist? It started when I was 18. I always had a passion for writing. I remember I wrote a letter to the Pittsburgh Dispatch against this sexist editorial piece they had published. I mean, I guess I caught the attention of the editor, George Madden, who later on offered me a position there. What made you want to go to the asylum? I wanted to go to the asylum because I guess I was curious to what goes on there and just how they cared for the patients. I started off by checking into a hotel and from there on I let loose. I pretended to be crazy and I guess I fooled the doctors, so they shipped me right off to the Women's Lunatic Asylum on Blackwell Island. What was the worst thing that you saw while in the asylum? I can't really pin down one thing as being the worst because honestly everything was pretty bad. For one, there was an extreme lack of hygiene throughout the institution. All of us had to use the same single towel and the same public comb as they called it. Plus, they gave us cold baths in the same bathtub without changing the water. But that wasn't the worst of it. One thing that really stands out to me was the treatment of this one poor girl. Her name was Urena, and she came into the hospital about a week into my stay. Right away, the nurses began teasing her. I mean, Urena was kind of simple-minded, and she liked to believe she was 18. She would get really angry if she told she wasn't. The nurses laughed at her and told her she was 33, which made her scream and yell that she just wanted to go home. She would not stop crying until the nurses jumped on her and actually slapped her face. This made her cry even more, so they choked her. Yes, they actually choked her, and like, I saw the red marks on her neck for the rest of the day. What was life like while living in the asylum? On some of the first days in the asylum, I was appalled at the conditions. The first thing I noticed was the fact that they fed us thick slices of bread with rancid butter and a couple of prunes for lunch. Other days, they fed us spoiled beef and gave us no utensils to eat it with. We literally had to gnaw the meat with our hands. There were also freezing baths almost every day and beatings to follow. It was enough to make even a sane person like me go crazy. Would you consider yourself a game changer in the reporting world? Looking back on everything I've accomplished, I would definitely say I made an impact on the reporting world. After 10 days of living on the Blackwell Insane Asylum, they released me. Two days after my release, the papers ran the first installment of my story, Behind Asylum Bars. Basically, I exposed the asylum and everything they've done to me and the rest of the patients. The psychiatric doctors who've been fooled offered apologies and defenses, and my story traveled across the country and letting everyone know. The city increased its budget for mental asylums, and overall my work was a success. I started a large-scale investment of many institutions, as well as much-needed improvements in healthcare. Nellie Bly was a saint for all those living in mental institutions across America. She brought awareness to the terrible living conditions and the treatment of the sick and insane. Overall, her book was successful, and she will not be forgotten for all she has accomplished.